This area of Osaka is famously dangerous. Japanese people even call it the slum of Japan. The area is known as the Nishinari ward of Osaka, and there's even a woman in the area who's famous for being banned from all of the local bars. Japanese vlogs depict this town as being overrun with homeless and with crime, with some going so far as to say that the area should be avoided entirely. In fact, just as I was shooting the opening, something really shocking happened to me. Somebody picked up my hat and just took off with it. Okay, I literally just recorded my opening here. I put my hat on this pole and some guy just put it on and went off. When I went to go after him, he started screaming at me. So I, he can have it. He can have the hat, but I have never had that experience in Japan. It was a hat, not a big deal, but. Okay. Due to the nature of the area, there is a strong police presence, but Nishinari has some incredibly cheap hotels, including what just might be the single cheapest hotel in Japan. This hotel right here is 500 yen per night. With the current exchange rate, that's just over three American dollars. But I just had a conversation with the owner who actually encouraged me not to stay here. He very kindly and reasonably explained that while listed as a hotel on Google, it's not intended to be a hotel for travelers or regular people, but rather kind of a specialty place for those without money to stay and went so far as to recommend the cheapest actual hotel in the area, which is this place, Hotel Diamond, is 1,100 yen per night, which is still just over seven American dollars. So let's give it a try. So apparently the elevator only stops every two floors. So I've got to go to the fifth floor and then walk up to the sixth. They also seem to have 300 yen a day Wi-Fi rental. So. I just need to find the stairs. There we go. And this should be my room. Oh wow, okay. Okay, so this will officially take the cake for the smallest room I've ever spent the night in. I should be happy that it has a lock and key. Apparently the 500 yen hotel had none of that. So if you take a bath or go to the washroom, you have to take all of your stuff with you. Also claustrophobics beware. I'm about to close the door and give the official room tour. I placed my sneakers in the garbage bin for now. They recommend not leaving them outside or they might get stolen. And this is the room. It comes with a sponge mattress, which is actually pretty soft some futon bedding, a blanket, and a pillow filled with either barley or something. I have a fan here, a little desk here, and a window that doesn't lock, but opens out right to the main street. There's a single plug for the whole room, which has a multi-plug adapter that has a cord that runs all the way down to the other side of the room where it is plugged into yet, another multi-plug adapter. Makes me wonder if they ever have power outages, but this actually isn't that much smaller than my first ever room in Japan. Even the desk setup is the same. The first place I stayed in was maybe double this, and I lived in that for a year. The window has zero insulation, so you hear everything outside. I'm curious about the restroom situation. Looking at Google Maps, though, there are a ton of restaurants, convenience stores, and everything in the area. For a thousand yen, I have stayed in a lot worse places and paid a lot more. I had a hotel in Naples, Italy once that literally had a hole in the wall. It was amazing. It's like a window without the glass. Looking at it, it seems like there are quite a few rooms in here as well. There's a bit of a sink area over here. And if I'm not mistaken, this should be the toilet. Okay, modern toilet with a washlet. This one too? Both of them. 
I was fully expecting the traditional Japanese style hole in the floor type toilet. Ceiling height is a little low, but at this point I'm literally just nitpicking. On the first floor there are also shower rooms and they're actually Actually really nice. Then right outside the shower space, there's a whole row of vending machines. But I noticed something kind of funny about my room. Aside from the ultra modern and super safe wiring they have just nailed to a wooden board here, I've also just noticed that anybody can control my light from the outside of the room. Not to mention the mystery box. This mystery box right here. This lock seems to have purpose, but what? What's this guy doing? You know, on closer inspection, I think the screws just fell out. But I guess the question remains, what is it like to actually spend the night here? So I will get this room set up and we will do, <laughs> we will do exactly that. So as I do this, the worst hotel in the entire country of Japan is not too far from here in Kobe and I swung by there recently. There we go. The rooms are not entirely dissimilar to these, but they're in much, much worse condition. Not a big fan of these pillows, by the way. I visited there a couple months back, and even just the building and hallways were quite the experience. Like the building itself gives off its serious do not enter vibes and Japanese Twitter paints a picture of why showing completely uninhabitable rooms. My goal was to stay for the night, but it took me a little while to find staff. The broken cigarette machine in the entrance was also covered in wanted posters and then I got some bad news. It turns out they had just stopped running it as a hotel and were preparing to tear the building down as they waited for the remaining long-term guests to leave. He was kind enough to invite me to take a peek around before it disappeared, but there was definitely a creepy atmosphere to it. And for me, the tour ended somewhere between the creepy doll heads in the window and what has to be the single worst toilet I think I've ever seen. It might have been better that I didn't stay the night. In comparison to that, this isn't bad at all, but now it's time to see if I'll even fit. And it does feel just a little bit weird staying in a place like this today, seeing as I drove from Tokyo to Osaka this morning in a GTR. Heck of a drive, by the way. I will link, but I woke up at 5 a.m. for that, so I don't think I'm gonna have any trouble sleeping today. Uh, and I just realized that not only do I have to open the door to turn off my light, but there's no air conditioning in here, and that fan is the only source of air circulation, so this place might not be as comfortable in the depths of the summer or winter and no curtains so at least we'll know when morning's here always love a good night view though okay good night <laughs> okay then the verdict the verdict is in excuse the morning face it is exactly 6 5 a.m and I slept pretty well, had a ton of dreams, which probably means I didn't sleep as well as I think I did, but it got me thinking. Like dollar for dollar, yen for yen, this has to be better than a capsule hotel in almost every single imaginable way. Like you get your own private locked clean space, albeit a little noisy outside, with free shower, Continental Britain, no, though there's no continental breakfast. But everything you have is right there for a thousand yen. Like especially seeing as since tourism picked up lately, even the capsule hotels aren't that cheap anymore. Some of them are getting up to three, four, five thousand yen a night for a box. I don't think I needed to clean the room by the way. It was less of a requirement, more of just a habit. I'm staying at a completely different hotel tonight. There are just way too many things I want to show off in detail. So I've started a Tokyo Lens Shorts channel. I'll put tonight's hotel and pretty much everywhere I stay from now on up there, along with all the cool stuff that I find. 
I had no idea there was a whole stairwell balcony here. I would have loved to see this view last night. That house down there has definitely seen better days and that alley is just filled with trash. But would you stay here? Let me know. I will link an entire playlist of tiny living spaces. That crow is driving me crazy and we will see you again real soon.